Good morning. As you come in, go ahead and share this video. Go ahead and like it. As you come in, let me know where you're watching from. I want to thank all of you for continuing to uh, subscribe and watch the videos. Thank you so much for the stars, those of you that send stars to support the work that we are doing. We had an awesome time in the Lord at our annual WOW conference. The Lord met us in such a powerful way. We've gotten testimony after testimony of what God is doing. Good morning. As you come in, go ahead and share this video and invite someone on. While in root empowerment is uh, normally on Wednesdays and Fridays, but for this week to give my voice a little bit of a rest, I kind of push things back to um, give my voice a chance to kind of recover from uh, the weekend's events. God met us in such a powerful way. For those that were able to come out, thank you for your support in the ministry and the things that the Lord has called us to do. We are excited about what God is doing within the body of Christ at large, and we are excited about what God is doing in you. We had such an amazing event, and all the people were blessed, but Today, I want to talk about where we left off at. We were discussing the power of seed. We talked about, um, prior to that, the power of a strong mind. But in order to understand the strongness of our mind, we have to understand the power of a seed. And oftentimes we allow seeds to be planted in our lives that bring forth a harvest. But God wants us to be those that are spiritual enough to know what types of seed we should be planting and how to um, reject seeds that hinder the will of God concerning us. So I want to pray real quickly here and then we'll get into this uh, word of empowerment for today. Thank you to all the destiny travelers that actually share these videos and invite somebody on. I appreciate you. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your love. Thank you, Father, for it is because of your mercy that we are not consumed. Great is your faithfulness to us, God. We thank you, Father, for all those that will watch this encouragement live and those that will watch the replay. I pray, Father, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. We pray, Father, for all things concerning righteousness, that this word will fall on good ground and the hearers of this word, this encouragement, this empowerment, Father, would ignite them, Father, in their destiny walk and they will become ones that fulfill everything that you have written concerning them in Jesus name. Amen. All right. For those of you that have shared, thank you. I appreciate your seed that you are sowing. So last time we were on here was last Friday and we talked about the power of a strong mind. Good morning. Thank you all for joining. I appreciate you, Vita, Christine, Loretta, Elder, uh, Elder Floyd, thank you for joining. Uh, Issa, thank you all for joining. Listen, if you are watching, you have to give StreamYard permission in order for me to see your comments um, within the thread. You have to give StreamYard permission and access or otherwise I won't see your comments inside the thread and I won't know who you are. So Father, we thank you for this opportunity. So the power of a seed. We have to understand something about our mind. Our minds are a fertile ground in which seed can be planted. There is a supernatural and a spiritual law at work in us. It is a principle that governs the world. When we plant a seed, a seed brings forth a harvest. When we um uh, plant anything that a harvest comes after that planting. This is supernatural and this is natural. 
When you plant apple seeds, the harvest is an apple tree. When you plant an orange seed, the harvest is an orange tree. So with every seed that we plant, both naturally and spiritually, there is some sort of harvest that results. Now, some seed can grow and mature and germinate and produce quickly, but then there are some seed that we may not see within our lifetime. Some things that we may plant within the kingdom of God. We may not see those things uh, produce or bring forth a harvest in this lifetime, but they will be a lasting harvest that your bloodline will begin to eat of. Your bloodline will begin to enjoy the harvest of that seed. For example, many people have planted a seed of a company, some sort of company, an idea that they had, but later on down the line, after they're dead and gone, their bloodline is reaping the harvest of that seed that they planted. So there are natural seeds and there are spiritual seeds, but it is a spiritual law and a truth that whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. For you have, and this is, uh, I'm going to read Peter verse chapter one, verse 23 through 25. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass wither and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. So here it is. When we're, when we're um, developing a strong mind, we have to guard our minds against ungodly seed. What does that mean? That means when we are born again, we are born again as a new creation in Christ Jesus. Nicodemus asked Jesus, how can a man be born again? And Jesus told him that he needed to be born of the water and of the spirit. There had to be a supernatural rebirthing, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed, which is from God through the Holy Spirit, whereby we are transformed metabolically into the new creation that is able to house the very presence in the spirit of God. So when we are born again, we experience things within the spirit realm. Our spirit then is able to encase the spirit of God. And what we have to do as new creations born of incorruptible seed, we have to there by grow within our spirit to the degree that our spirit expands and we become strong in spirit. We become clear in spirit so that we can walk out this supernatural life in our mind, our will, and our emotions. But what we have to do is become transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may test what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. So how do we become transformed? We are incorruptible seeds. So now what we need to do is take in the word of God, which will be seed planted in our mind that brings forth fruit unto righteousness, that brings forth a harvest unto righteousness. When we are begotten of God, now listen, a lot of people are not the begotten of God. They have not been fully transformed by God. They have been behavior modified, meaning in the flesh, we uh, um, tend to go after the works rather than the heart. We allow our works to be transformed rather than our hearts to be transformed, which is the place of transformation. We can only be born again when we yield our hearts fully to God. But what we have to do is allow ourselves to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, by the washing of the word, so that the word of God can work out in us and 
then the nature of God becomes a natural thing for us. The nature of Christ becomes a natural thing for us. The word of God says, in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. So if in the flesh dwelleth no good thing, in my carnal state, in my fleshly suit, I cannot please God. I cannot produce good works. I cannot do good things for God. I can do good things because they're morally good, but they had do not have have eternal value. So what we want to do is begin to walk out the nature of Christ, meaning Christ's character becomes a natural inclination. So we are not born of this perishable seed, the things that will wither away. No, but we are born of incorruptible seed. So when we pass away in this fleshly suit, we have a life that is eternal. So when we are people that have a strong mind, we know that the word of God is what washes us. The word of God is what cleanses us. The word of God is what's sown into our hearts, our mind, our will, and our emotions so that those areas of our lives and our hearts become natural inclinations to the character of Christ. God's glory is revealed through us when we exemplify the nature of Jesus Christ. How does men see our good works? They see our good works because our natural inclinations are the character of Christ. We act like Christ. We become like Christ. We move like Christ. We respond like Christ. We plant seeds like Christ. So the word of God then is sown into our hearts and it brings forth a harvest. Remember, I said there's a spiritual and a natural law that when seeds are sown, everything in the kingdom starts as a seed. Everything in the world starts as a seed. An idea can be a seed both naturally and spiritually. But what you do with that seed determines how it will be sown. It determines how the harvest will come. It determines if that seed will bring forth the harvest in which you intended it. So we can sow seeds that are evil and we can sow seeds that are good. So these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard it, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that is sown in their hearts. So ideas can be a seed. The word of God is a seed. It is a thought. It is a process that is sown into your heart that is supposed to bring forth a harvest unto right actions, unto right alignment with God. When the word of God is sown into our hearts, it brings transformation in our minds, our wills, and our emotions. So it's a problem if we're sitting underneath the word of God and there's no transformation. If it's a problem if we're sitting and we're getting teachings and we're hearing the truth and there's no transformation in our mind, will, and emotion because the word of God in itself has the power to transform those who are begotten of God. So if you are not the begotten of God, you can't comprehend the truth. You can't embrace the truth. The Bible says that he has blinded the minds of those who are not of God. Those that are in the world are blind to the truth. They can't receive it. They can't take it in. It's not able to transform them because there's no revelatory power and there's no revelation. So God has to uh, unveil the mind so that we can accept by the Holy Spirit the word of truth as he reveals it. So when we are begotten of God, when we are those that are born of incorruptible seed, God then begins to build up our minds and our minds begin to be strengthened in the word of truth. So when there is a principle at law that every action that we uh, partake of, big or small, good or evil, is a seed. All spiritual seeds will bear fruit and all natural seeds will bear fruit. 
whether the sower anticipates it or not. So here is the thing. When you become a Christ follower, rather you anticipate it or not, when you become naturally and spiritually. So let's just take it off, off the table that it's only Christ followers. This is natural, both natural and spiritual. So this is a principle in that the world is governed by. You, you ever heard the term uh, what comes around goes around or you reap what you sow? And, and it's both truthful in the spirit and it's truthful in the natural. It's a law that it's a principle that governs this world. So what you sow is literally going to come back to you. So we have to be intentional about our words. Our words can be seeds. We have to be intentional about our actions. Our actions are seeds, whether we sow love, whether we sow joy, whether we sow counsel, whether we sow help into others, whether we sow um, hatred, whether we sow um, a murder, whatever we sow, there is something that is coming back to us. There is a principle. And I uh, just uh, begin to meditate upon the people that uh, murdered Emmett Till and how none of them really got... Uh, uh, convicted in a court of law, but there is a spiritual law that what you sow, you begin to reap. And one of the things that I began to understand as I was just meditating upon this and I, me and my family watched this movie. And just a few days later, uh, the last survivor who accused Emmett Till at 88, I think she was 88. She died of cancer, but here it is. All of those that were in cahoots with this accusation against Emmett Till and who were the ones who committed his murder, this uh, horrific uh, torture and murder of a 14-year-old boy, all of them ended up dying of cancer. All of them ended up living their lives out suffering from pain because of, this is what I believe it was, seeds that were sown, actions that were done. And oftentimes we don't realize that this law is at work in the world, whether we want it to come back or not, whether we believe in it or not, whether we subscribe to the truth or not, it's there and nobody can get away from this law that is at work. These people took horrific action against this boy and his family and they were never brought to justice but that law began to work and they began to reap in suffering in their lives based upon the actions that they committed so every action here it is big or small so we must be intentional about our actions. We must become people that are intentional and guarding our tongue, guarding, setting a watch at the door of our mouths so that the seeds that we do plant bring forth a harvest unto righteousness. So we want our harvest. We want the seeds that we plant to be seeds of righteousness. We want to sow love. We want to sow patience. We want to sow kindness. We want to sow counsel. We want to sow time into other people's lives so that we are able to reap a harvest unto righteousness and get it here. I know in this current culture that we live in, there are a lot of people that want things quick, fast, and in a hurry. I don't know too many things that you can plant, that you bring forth a harvest the next day, that things happen readily, that things happen right away. There is a time of planting. There is a time of sowing. There is a time of watering. There is a time of, of looking after the harvest, watching the harvest, tending the harvest. But then there's a time that you will begin to reap the harvest. You'll begin to reap those things which you sown. We can't plant and give today and expect a harvest tomorrow. We can't plant and, and preach today and expect a harvest tomorrow. 
We can't obey God today and expect a harvest tomorrow. We have to wait for that thing to germinate. We have to wait for that thing to begin to break open. We have to wait for that thing to become full grown so that we don't destroy the harvest or pluck up the harvest before it's time. So we have to be mindful of the seed. But when it comes to the mind, the mind is a fertile ground. Our minds need to be washed and cultivated with the truth of the word of God, with the doctrines of the, of the gospel, with the truth of theology, the understanding of God, and the understanding of the triune God. Our minds has to be transformed out of the world system and into the kingdom of God. When we are new creation, we are translated out of darkness and into the marvelous light. So what the transformation in the word of God does is it changes you to the degree that your mind comes out of the world's way of doing things. And you start to take on the nature of the word of God, which is the nature of Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is the word and he came in the flesh. The Bible says, and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So if the word is flesh, the inspired logos that we read today is the very nature of Jesus Christ that we're engulfing, that we're planting in our hearts and the nature of Jesus Christ is the inclinations of the spirit of God. And these are the things that we want to change in our nature so that our nature doesn't naturally want revenge. So our nature doesn't naturally want, we then become changed in our nature, in our mind, in our will, and in our emotions. Everything becomes changed, transformed on a metabolic level to the degree that we don't respond the way others respond. We don't respond the way we used to respond in the flesh. Our response is to love rather than hate. Our response is to to have patience rather than impatience. Our response is to have joy rather than grief. Our response is different from those of the world because we have on a new nature. And if we are to have a strong mind, we have to take in the word of God. We have to become ones that engulf the truth. Now, here it is. Hear me. A lot of Christians even leaders do not read the word of God. If we're not reading the word of God, it's impossible to be transformed. It's impossible to have the nature of Christ dwelling in us because we're not taking in that seed, which is to bring a harvest unto righteousness. The seed of God in us brings the harvest unto righteousness. What is the harvest unto righteousness? It implants the good things of the word of God within me so that when the harvest comes, I know that the harvest is there when I respond, not after the flesh, but after the spirit, because the Bible says in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. So when I turn to the good things of God, the report of the Lord, when I turn to the nature of Christ, when that is my natural inclination that comes out of my creative, my innermost being that comes out of the heart of me, then when offense comes, when temptation temptation comes, when trials come, when tests come, I have a natural inclination to exemplify the glory of the Lord. And what is the glory of the Lord? The glory of the Lord is the expression of God. So when I would do Eat good, evil is always present. But thanks be unto God, Paul says, through Christ Jesus in my natural flesh, when I want to do good, evil is always present. But he says through the transformation and the power, the life, the death, <clears throat> the burial and the resurrection of Christ, I have the power to overcome. So Satan beguiled Eve and uh this is what our fallen nature is about, the lies of the enemy. The lies of the enemy is the seed that he desires to plant in your heart. 
these lies concerning who God is, the lies concerning the body of Christ. He tries to trip us up in our understanding of God. He tries to trip us up in our understanding of each other and what it looks like to be a, a blood bought believer, begotten of God, transformed in God. The seed of disobedience is in the children of disobedience, but the seed of righteousness is in the seed of the chosen and begotten of God. So Satan's desire is to sift us as wheat. He desires to separate us from God. He desires to cause us to uh, uh, move away from the truth. And one of the things that fights against the truth is rebellion. So if the word of God is what transforms us, if the word of God is what delivers us, if the word of God is what transforms us on a metabolic level, what does that mean on a metabolic level? It means internally, I no longer respond the way that the world responds. Internally, I have a natural love for my brethren. Internally, I don't want to give to others what they've given to me. Internally, God uh, uh, counsels me to have a compassion against those who walk after the flesh and not after the spirit. He says to his disciples, this is the mark of your salvation. My God, this is good to me. This is the mark that the seed of God has manifested a harvest unto righteousness. They will know the harvest by your love. And sometimes we think we can prophesy. We can lay hands on the sick. We think we can have all of these dreams and visions. But he said, this is the mark of demark. This is the mark and the seal that the world would know that you belong to me. He said, how well is the harvest of your love? My God today, how well do you love? How well do you love those who persecute you? How well do you love those? Jesus said on the cross, in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the pain, he said, Father, forgive them because they're ignorant. Forgive them because they don't understand what's really taking place. Forgive them because they're being deceived by the enemy. Forgive them because they know not what they are partaking in. They don't understand who's at work behind their actions. They don't understand who has taken up residence in their hearts. So it was this love manifested in the life of Christ that we as sons and daughters have to begin to build ourselves up in our innermost being. So when we are built up in our innermost being through the intake of the word of God, which is the seed that the enemy desires to steal. So when we are in in church and the anointed preacher is preaching the gospel when we're on a Facebook live because there's so many ways to get the message out. When we're reading books that have been inspired by the scribes in the kingdom of God, is that word coming in you and grafting in your heart and bringing forth a natural inclination unto righteousness? You should start to do some things naturally. You should start to respond some ways naturally. Why? Because you are being changed on a metabolic level. Internally, my nature is different. Where I wanted to fight and cuss and get back and take up for myself. There is a peace that surpasses all understanding. There is a reverence for what God is doing. We see things from a higher realm and a deeper place. We can take on the nature of Christ and we can be tried in every area of our hearts, our mind, our will and emotions. Why? Because we are changed by the seed that we have planted. My God today, if this is good to you, type is good. So the rebellion against the truth stops us from receiving the engrafted word of God in our hearts, 
whereby we are changed. We are changed on the metabolic level when we take in the seed of the word. And when we take in the seed of the word, the Lord begins to build us up in our character. He begins to build us up in the works of God, of righteousness. He begins to build us up and we express the nature of the Holy Spirit. We have the gifts of Holy Spirit. We have the fruit, the manifestation of the fruit, which is the harvest. Are you getting this? So the nature of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of Holy Spirit, the manifestation of Holy Spirit, how we know Holy Spirit is present is because we have love, because we have joy, because we have peace, because we just walk away and we don't fight our own battles. We trust those battles to the Lord. We trust him for vindication. We trust him to take up our fight. We trust him to bring forth the truth. My God, we don't get on social media and go into a typing war. Why? Because he is the one that vindicates. He is the one that proves who's right and who's wrong. But here it is. When we take up this mindset that we have to do it, that we have to fight for ourselves, that we have to defend ourselves, that is rebellion against the truth. We trust him. He is the vindicator. He says, I am the one that will repay. A vengeance belongs to me. Don't you take up your own battles. Don't you fight. So the word of God has everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness. So what the enemy will try to do is deter us from reading the word. He will deter us from knowing and understanding the truth because this is how we are changed by the spirit and the word of God working together in tandem to bring us into the place of full manifestation. What the word does is solidifies the work of the spirit. But if I am ignorant in the word, I can be ignorant of what the Spirit's work is doing in me. When things change or shift, I may not be able to articulate it, but I know something has changed in my innermost being. So what the Word of God does, it begins to put language to what you are experiencing in the realm of the Spirit. So in the Spirit of God, he says the Spirit gives life and the letter gives death, but the Spirit and the Word Word of God together both bring forth a harvest unto righteousness. So when we read the word of God, we are taking in the very nature of Jesus Christ. We are taking in the very person of Jesus Christ. And when we take him in, when we believe on the truth, when we embrace the truth, we are then changed on a metabolic level and God begins to be manifested through our actions. Our actions are no longer the actions that we committed before we came to Christ. We will see a noticeable difference in how you respond. People around you will say, are you just going to let them talk about you like that? Are you not going to do anything? And you'll begin to declare, that's not how we fight our battles. We fight our battles on our knees. Just pray. Just begin to pray and seek God. When those around you want to take up a sword like Peter did in the garden. You'll begin to say, put down the sword because those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. You'll begin to allow the things of God to play out. You'll begin to have a higher spiritual perspective to the things of God, the processes of God, the call of God, the nature of God, and what your part and role is in the kingdom of God. When you begin to take on the seed of right Righteousness. When you begin to be one that is begotten of God, not begotten of the religious system, not being transformed by behavior modification, but I'm talking about when the Holy Spirit begins to transform you on a metabolic level, meaning my nature is different. I no longer respond that way because in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. So I need the Spirit of God to come inside me and strengthen my innermost being, strengthen my spirit, strengthen my spirit so where the Holy Ghost lives, that 
he begins to expand in me and he begins to create greater capacity for the nature of Jesus Christ. And I then become one that houses the glory of God because the glory of God is the expression of Jesus Christ. He is the firstborn among many brethren. So what I need to do is live my life to the degree that I can do everything in my perspective and in my uh, uh, understanding that exemplifies the life of Christ. I can forgive those who persecute me. I can forgive those who betray me. I can love those who are unlovable. Why? Because that is the the, the demarcation side that you belong to Christ Jesus. But here it is. Those in the world would say, why would he forgive her? Why would she forgive him? I wouldn't take that. I wouldn't do that. But God said, this is how you know. I, uh, those that experience you, when you are begotten of God, when you have the seed of God in you, those that experience you should experience him. My God. Jesus, 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 my God, today, when you experience, when you are begotten of God and you are born of incorruptible seed and you are eating the very word of God, which is the nature of Jesus Christ, and that thing is changing you by the spirit and the word, that thing is transforming you. Now, if you don't have the spirit of God and you're just reading the word of God, you're just doing behavior modifications. But if you're yielding to the spirit of God, and if you're walking in the spirit, and if you're saying, God, have your way in me, if you're crying out, Abba, Father, if your voice every day goes before your father and says, I can't do it, but you can. I need your strength and I need your help. I yield to the voice of the spirit of God. If you become one that is in tune with the spirit of God and what he wants to do in and through you and you begin to recognize areas of your life where you're not submitted to God and you begin to say God that area is not submitted unto you God help me to submit myself in my life unto you in every area so when we begin to do that God's glory is manifested through our lives and the seed of righteousness that is planted with uh, in us God begins to bring forth that harvest and people begin to see you elevate people begin to see God lifting you your spirit begins to be illuminated with the glory of God because the manifestation of the spirit of God is illuminated through your life he says if I be lifted up from the earth. I will draw all men unto me. How is he drawing all men unto him? Because we're lifting him up in our lives and his glory is manifesting through us. He said uh, uh, um, uh, that the your light will shine before men because we are in a world of darkness so the light in us will begin to shine before men that they may see his good works how are they seeing his good work because the seed that is within you has blossomed into a harvest and everyone can see the manifestation so that greatness that is within you become manifest on the outside of you through your actions at the growth store, through your actions at the uh, uh, restaurants, through your actions when uh, uh, um, the cashier messes up your money, you don't get all out of sorts. You don't get an attitude. You just patiently wait that thing out because you have the fruit of the manifestation of Holy Spirit in you, giving you patience for that moment. And, and, and the Lord began to bring this out I was at Target about a month ago. And while I was at Target, the cashier, I wanted to uh, pay with gift cards and I wanted to pay with two different modes of uh, uh, money, but she ended up charging everything to my Target card. And so I was just kind of like, oh man, like, oh, can you change that? Can you do it over? But the beautiful thing that I began to see that the Lord began to show me is the patience that I had to endure that time of getting that situation fixed. I ended up having to go take my, she said, well, I can't do it. Can you just take your receipt and go to the uh, 
to the customer service. And when I went to the customer service, one girl was like, well, I got to ring everything up separately. I got to ring everything up all over again. And so she scanned and scanned and scanned it, and everything didn't come out to the same amount that the original receipt was. So she's like, I must have missed some things. I don't know why it's coming out. So they had to do it all over again. And another lady, I think she was the manager, she came and she had to ring everything up separately. She ended up going through the original receipt and typing out every number that was on each product and putting it back into her computer. So what am I saying? After that experience, the Lord began to reveal to me where I had grown in my patience. He said, you didn't get uh, out of sorts. He said, the only thing I said, because the girl kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I, I apologize. I apologize for you having to go through this. You know, I, I'm sorry that this is. So God will begin to put you in situations. Come on, to see what comes out of you, to see if the word has been sown and there is a harvest. But if you keep passing, the, if you keep uh, failing the test, you're going to have to take that test over again. You're going to have to plant that seed over again because the harvest didn't come. Somewhere there was not a translation of the seed that God wanted to plant on the inside of you. So look for situations where you can see a noticeable harvest. When you're at the grocery store, do you put the cart back or do you just throw it? I begin to take on the understanding that somebody has to work this and somebody has to do this. <clears throat> My husband used to say when we first got married, he, he like, you're the, you're a stocks boys. You're a stock boys worst nightmare because we would walk through the store and I would just put things back anywhere. And I didn't have that full revelation or understanding that. As a Christ follower, my whole job, our whole job and purpose is to help alleviate the burden of humanity. So anywhere where I can impact my influence upon a situation, putting the cart back where it belongs, putting things back where they belong in the store. If I can't put it back, give it to the cashier so she can put it back. Just helping humanity to make their load lighter. So God began to reveal to me in that moment. And this wasn't until afterward, the Holy Spirit brought me back to that moment. He said, you see, he said, you've grown in your patience. He said, this is what I've been trying to work out in you. Because this is what the Lord had been dealing with me about with patience. And so he said, you've grown in your patience. He said, even to the degree that your response was, I just want to go home. <laughs> I didn't get out of sorts. The lady was just like, though it was an inconvenience. I'm not going to tell you like, I wasn't like, oh, like this is the inconvenience. Yes, I own that the truth was it was an inconvenience. I did not want to be there, but I didn't get an attitude. I didn't blame it on this one. I didn't blame it on that one. So much so that the testing wasn't over. So the next time I went to this target, I ended up going to this target again and my initial thing was, I don't want to get in that lady's line again because <laughs> I don't want to have anything mess up um, my time. I want to get in and out of here. I don't want her to. But guess what? I ended up unknowingly and just by coincidence or divine appointment <laughs> in the lady's line. I ended up in that same lady's line, the same lady that messed up my order, made me have to go to, to the uh, cashier. And, and, and this is what I heard in the spirit. Now, this is mercy. <laughs> my God, Jesus. Are y'all getting this? Are you getting this? He told the Holy Spirit said, now, this is mercy. She messed up the first time. He said, now you give her another chance. My God. So, so I began, I sat in that line a second time, knowing she messed up my order last time. So I'm going to have mercy upon her to give her another chance. This is the expression of the nature and the metabolic change. Not to the degree that I said, no, nah, she messed up my order last time. I'm not going to give her no mercy. I'm going to another line. I don't even want her to, I don't want, see the, the flesh wants to remember what happened and not extend the mercy of God, not extend second chances to people. But that is not the nature of Jesus Christ. So when we house the very nature of Jesus Christ, he then uh, uh, 
uh, trains us in our responses. He tells us what we need to do. The nature begins to act, be activated and actualized to the degree, here it is, that we yield. Now, I could have overrode, I could have overrided the spirit of God. I could have overrided that uh, 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 revelation that he gave me of seeing her, not remembering what happened before and not extending the mercy to her to try again. Mm. So in <laughs> now this thing that took a whole, whole nother, whole nother turn in the body of Christ. When people fall, when people mess up, we do not extend that mercy. We do not extend that grace. We remember what they did. We don't give them a second chance. We don't let them try again. But that's not the nature of Jesus Christ. He said, now this is mercy. This is mercy being given to her for what happened the first time. You're allowing her to uh, uh, repeat the transaction. He says, see how my nature comes out. The Lord began to show me this so very clearly. And in that moment, I said, Thank you, God. Thank you that your nature is at work in me. Thank you that there is a seed and a harvest of righteousness. But here it is. We got to keep eating the word, eating the truth. So it takes away that carnal, fleshly nature because in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. The mercy was the good thing the spirit of God gave me. The patience was the good thing the spirit of God gave me so that I can have patience for myself in that transaction. Patience with the cashiers while they worked out my situation and patience so that I can exemplify the nature of Jesus Christ. And in the transaction, hear me, with the cashiers, the lady, began, the, the lady gave me a $10 gift card that I didn't even ask for. He get, she said, thank you for being patient. I'm sorry about this. She said, I'm adding a $10 gift card so that when you come back, you'll get $10 off. I didn't ask for that. I didn't say, well, what are you going to do to rec you know, <laughs> what are you going to do to rectify this situation? What are you going to do for me? Because I'm being inconvenienced. No, she began to respond to what I was giving out to the patience I was exemplifying. To the, to the nature of Jesus Christ, there was a reward for the patience that I had for that cashier, even though it was an inconvenience. And I'm not going to say that, oh, it did irritate me, but there wasn't a expression. There wasn't actions. I was just a little deterred in myself because I was like, oh, this is taking up all my time. Oh my God, I really don't. I'm re oh, because it was an exasperating situation where they scanning all your stuff one by one and then inputting all the numbers one by one. But what it what did it reveal to me? It revealed that the seed of God, the seed of righteousness, the seed that I've been eating, the word that I've been eating, the transformation that God has been doing in me has been manifested out of me. So when those situations come, what manifests, what actions take root? So when you can have that patience and that meekness to control your emotions, not fly off the handle, not get an attitude, not snatch the receipt, not say you should have gave me $25, you know, just to take the reward that's given. Like so, some of us do that, like you should have gave me more than this. So it's a heart that has been transformed. And that's what we want that seed to do in our minds. The word of God to wash us, to cleanse us, to change us on a metabolic level. So when you go to church, when the preacher who has been sent by God preaches the word of God, but with power and conviction, let the word hit you on the top of your head. Let the word transform you when you read the word. Don't just read the word to be reading the word. Read the word to receive the word in your heart and ask the Lord, Lord, transform me by the renewing of your word. Let your word renew my mind. Let it work out in my will and my emotions and my actions. Let that thing become transformational on a metabolic level, meaning I love like you love. I walk like you walk. I have patience like you have patience. 
My nature is your nature. And that's what we want. We see a whole lot of people in the body of Christ that have not been transformed, that are just behavior modifications, that are working out religion, that truly haven't been born and begotten of God. And that thing hasn't worked itself out in every area of their lives. We want transformation to the degree that our wives, our husbands, our children want to be like us. We just had the conference and it was amazing. Thank you all for those that have sent hearts, uh, stars, <laughs> who have sown stars into the work that we are doing, into the calling that the Lord has called us on this platform. As we were doing um, the conference, and I went upstairs into, into my hotel room to change and get prepared for the evening service. And I was just there by myself and my daughter was with me and I'm praying and I'm preparing and I'm talking to the Lord. And my daughter looked up at me. She said, mom, when I get older, I want to be just like you. And that blessed me. So to have my daughter say, I want to be just like you. And her being just like me, what she is really saying is, I want to be just like God. Because that's my aim, to exemplify the nature of Jesus Christ. That's all of our aim, to exemplify. So when people say, I want to be like you, make sure you are like Christ. Because Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And when we follow Christ and people want to be like us, we shouldn't take on an idolization or a... a, 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 a idolatry mindset. What we want to take on is, well, I'm following Christ. So you really want to be like him. If you think I'm loving, if you think I'm kind, if you think I'm, I'm patient, it's because Christ is and I am. So we want to be those that are born of incorruptible seed to where when we take off this flesh suit, we have a life in eternity that we are reaping harvest from what we sown in this life in this life and in the life to come. There are seeds that we will bring forth in a harvest. Now, I didn't know these things early on. And if I if I knew them, I didn't grasp the, uh, uh, the strength of them and the revelation of them. So prayerfully, those of you that have seen this broadcast, both live and you've watched the replay, I pray that this revelation would uh, illuminate in your spirit I pray that the truth of the word of God will shine through you and you will begin to be one that is intentional about the words that you say, the actions that you do. Thank you for sharing this broadcast. Thank you for liking it. Thank you for those that follow my page. I appreciate the support and the work that God has called me to do here on social media. Thank you, guys. I appreciate those that sow into my ministry, those that are uh, mentees of mine that uh, I coach and mentor. I take it not for granted that the Lord has allowed you to come and be up under the um, coaching and the mentoring and the ministry that God has placed within me. This is a season where the body of Christ is arising to a greater uh, uh, understanding and revelation and God is purifying his body and he's bringing those such as myself from the back to the front for the kingdom agenda. I'm moving in the things of God and I'm excited about what God is doing in you. And I'm excited about what God is doing in me. Keep us in your prayers. If you're interested in any uh, of my materials, I have books on my website. You could go to my website at www.touchdownsenterprise.com where you can um, purchase any books, any uh, coaching products or materials. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I love you with my love. Be blessed and have an amazing Friday.